schools. Um, and the way that we think about this, I mean, you can see 160 is relatively small. Uh, it's sort of a boutique kind of program. So the students will talk a little bit more about this, I think. But the idea is that when you are part of this program, you're sort of part of two, uh, I mean, this is going to sound a little cliched and sort of uh, uh, a little funny to put it this way, but you're kind of part of two different families, right? So when you're at William & Mary, you're part of the William & Mary family, but you're also part of the JDP program family. So you, you have sort of everybody that's in that program uh, as part of your you know, sort of larger cohort and you're at William & Mary, so you're part of the William & Mary family. And then if you go to St. Andrews or when you go to St. Andrews, you're still part of the JDP family, of course, but now you have a new family that's adopting you, which is the St. Andrews family. Uh, so you're part of that family. And I guess a third one is this, the William & Mary family you still have on the other side of the Atlantic. So it's an interesting program in the sense that you're sort of part of a, uh, a unique group of people, a new group of students who are traveling between schools, um, but part of both schools at the same time. So it's, it's, you know, I think the family metaphor explains it pretty well, but we can kind of get into, you know, some of the, the mechanics of how this works and how, how, you know, you're sort of part of a, a almost like a school within a school type of, of setting. The other thing I'll say about that just briefly too, because of the, the, the boutique nature of it, we offer lots of, of different uh, sort of services and, and things that you wouldn't normally get uh, if you were a William & Mary student or if you were uh, a St. Andrews student in the sense of having, um, you know, sort of major advisors that are, that are sort of handpicked and, and tailored for the program, having a support network, which we'll talk about in a second. So the boutique nature is not just necessarily like how small it is. It is a relatively small program, but it's also sort of the service um, and the various aspects of, of, you know, your educational experience that you get, which are a little bit different than in normal sort of majors at, at William & Mary or elsewhere. So, the way it's structured, uh, and you might have seen this on the website, uh, it can be a little bit confusing, but the basic idea, as I said before, you spend two years at each place, and it follows either an ABAB or ABBA model, which is to say, if you apply to William & Mary and you get into the program, you start at William & Mary, we call you a William & Mary home student, so it's like the place that you, you start. In your second year, you'll go to St. Andrews. So that's so A is the first year, B was, would be the second year. And then your third year is a choice. So you can either go back to William & Mary for your third year, in which case you would then go to St. Andrews in your fourth year, or you could stay at St. Andrews in your third year and finish out uh, your, your time at William & Mary in your fourth year. So the model is up to you. You don't have to make this decision when you apply. You actually don't have to make this decision until much further uh, down the road, but it's something to think about in terms of where you're gonna be spending, spending your time. Now the students I'm sure will have lots to say about the, the relative merits of ABBA or ABB, ABAB uh, and, and which one you should choose or how you should think about this. But uh, this is the way that it's, it's basically structured in terms of, of where you spend your time. I mentioned before the idea of a, of a sort of support network within this boutique uh, program. And I wanna explain one sort of piece of that, which I think is really important. And these are the major advisors. So basically what we've done is we've uh, sort of handpicked major advisors at both schools who are intimately familiar with the program. They know the ins and outs of the, of the requirements. They know about, you know, the academic, you know, challenges that the program uh, uh, presents. Also, they know about the social challenges that the program presents. And we work very closely, you know, together as a group at William & Mary, but also our group at William & Mary works very closely with the, the folks at, at St. Andrews. And so the idea here is that wherever you are, so if you start at William & Mary, but you're at St. Andrews for year two or three, you can get in contact with your major advisor back at William & Mary, and they know you and they'll, they'll know, you know what, your, what your story is and the classes you're taking and all that kind of thing to help you make sure that you're going through the process uh, in the most effective of way. Because sometimes what happens is a student will go to St. Andrews and they'll have a question about a, a, a class or something like that, uh, and they want to get the take of, of their major advisor, William & Mary, so they'll shoot off an email or they'll have a, you know, these days a Zoom session or whatever, and they'll try to figure out exactly, you know, what the, the best way forward is. So these are sort of, you know, uh, faculty members that are there to support you through the entire process. You don't, it's not like, you know, you, you go to St. Andrews and they forget about you. They, they are there for you the entire uh, four years. And importantly, one of the other things that they do is they help you pre-register for the courses that you need for your major. One of the benefits of this program is that when you're, when you're in it, precisely because you only spend two years at each place, it's very important for us to, to make sure that you get the classes that you need and that you're, you're set up to succeed and, and all that kind of stuff. So what we do is we pre-register you for the classes that you need for your major. So that's a nice benefit. Uh, with respect to the program that, that not every William & Mary student gets, obviously. And that's one of the things that we're, we're sort of doing to create a support network for you. So you shouldn't feel like, oh, geez, I, I got to worry about getting into this class or, or, or that class or anything like that. We make sure that you'll get into all the classes that you need in order to make timely progress towards your, your degree. 
And I didn't say this before, but I should mention it uh, just briefly, like what, what my role is. I mean, I'm here basically to kind of support you and, and help you through the program. So uh, I oversee the major advisors. I also work very closely with the folks at St. Andrews. We go you know, through all the degree requirements and we make sure that everything is kind of lined up and makes sense and, and all the things that you need uh, to succeed in the program. And ultimately, if you have problems or questions or issues, there's lots of different people that can help you, but I'm, I'm here uh, to support you and, and do what I can to answer your questions and, and things like that. So, you know, whether it's an admissions question now, or if you end up doing this program a year from now and you have a question, you can always come to me. My door is open, not literally open because we're on Zoom, but when we're in normal times, my, my office door is always open. You come in and, and see me and I'll, and I'll help you any way I can. All right, so we talked about ABAB, talked about ABBA. The other thing is, whoops, ah, my thing is, okay, hopefully it stays there. Uh, the other part of the support network that I think is, is also critical is the idea of peer advisors. So we have several of them on this call, uh, which uh, the webinar, which will, you'll be able to speak to them. But I just want to give you a sense of, of sort of what they do and why they're important to this, this program. So peer advisors are similarly sort of handpicked. There's an application process uh, where we go through and we, and we pick students who, you know, not only have done well in the program, but we think are also going to be helpful in supporting other students. And the idea for the peer advisors is to help you specifically with the transition between universities. It's, there's no question that one of the challenges of this program is that you start at William and Mary, let's say, and you spend a year and you, and you make friends and you, you get to know Williamsburg and you get to know everything about William and Mary. And then all of a sudden you got to pack up and go to St. Andrews and learn a whole new system, a whole new culture, uh, all that kind of stuff, right? So we, you know, try to make this as easy as we can. Uh, and the way that we do that, frankly, the most important thing that we do is we have peer advisors that can help you with the process. So the peer advisors will talk a little bit more about what they do, but they're a student support network ultimately uh, to help you through the program. There's also something called the WAMSTA Student Partnership, which is a similar uh, type of thing. It's a student run organization. They have meetings on both sides. There are uh, various you know, social activities that they do. They do mentoring events, all kinds of different stuff. They're there to help you as well. We have a, a graduate student fellow who is uh, working specifically for the program at William & Mary and the, the uh, Cohen Career Center. And their job is basically help you to, you know, frankly, sell, sell yourself when it comes time to getting a job, sell yourself in terms of, of graduate school opportunities, help you market your, uh, the program to, to employers. How do you sort of, you know, uh, get a job in the UK if you're a US citizen and you want to stay in, in, in the UK and, and work there? All that kind of stuff is, is part of what the, the JDP fellow does to help you not just in the program, but once you get outside the program to, you know, get a job that you want or to, to get into graduate school or whatever the case might be. I mentioned that we we have sort of a boutique, uh, I, I kind of think it was like a concierge type of, of, of thing going on with the program. Part of that also is social events. So we have, you know, barbecues and we have movie nights and we have, you know, various things around big events, family weekend, graduation, uh, that's all sort of part of the JDP family. So uh, it's not like when you come here, you're part of a, a program that you never see the other, other people in it. Quite the opposite. We we tend to get together again with with the COVID stuff has been a little bit different this year. But but in a normal year we tend to get together a lot in person and have have you know meals and things like that. And so it's really kind of a fun you know part of the program that you get to see the people that are in it and socialize with them, not just uh, in an academic way. There's also very social media uh, you know, sites and and pages and groups and group me's and the students can tell you all about that kind of stuff. But the point is is that we try to do everything we can. Uh, to make the JDP a special experience, but also to, to keep the sort of JDP family going and making sure everybody knows who they can reach out to if they have problems or anything like that. All right, I, I've spoken a lot. So let me just give you a couple last things to, to remember, then I'll turn it over to, to the students. One thing to keep in mind is that students are full members of the school that they are attending at that moment, right? So sometimes I get questions about the program. They say, well, if I, if I join the JDP, can I join a club? Can I do a fraternity? Can I do a sorority? Can I do a club sports? The answer is yes. Uh, there are very few exceptions, like some varsity sports is kind of tricky because you're only in, in one place for two years. Uh, but for the most part, everything that's available to you as a, as a regular William & Mary student is available to you as a, a William & Mary student who's part of the JDP program. Because you, you're admitted to William & Mary first and then you are considered for the JDP. So you're a full-fledged William & Mary, Mary student. Uh, this includes internships, research opportunities, the Washington DC Center, all of this stuff is available to you like it would be uh, anybody else. One other thing to keep in mind, though, is that, you know, William & Mary and St. Andrews are uh, uh, different institutions, right? We come from different intellectual traditions. 
you know, the, the, the sort of thing that I study is in international relations. And I can tell you a little bit about how this, this works in international relations. In the United States, we tend to view it as a, as a social science. We're very sort of scientific about it. Uh, we use numbers, we use math, you know, we use game theory and, and, and things like that. On, on the St. Andrews side, it's much more philosophical, it's much more historical, uh, much more theory oriented, right? And so one of the benefits is that the students in, in the International Relations Program, Katie can talk about this maybe a little bit, you get to see both sides, right? So you get to see sort of the, the sciencey orientation of, of the way that, that American scholars typically do international relations. And then you go to St. Andrews and you see the way that European scholars, British scholars do international relations. And that's just something that you're not gonna get necessarily uh, in one place or the other, right? So it's, it's the combined sort of experience where you get those two different traditions. And that intellectual tradition also affects the way the classes are done. The students can tell you a little bit more about this, but you know, you take more classes at William & Mary than you do at St. Andrews. The classes themselves tend to be different. The way that you're assessed in terms of exams and papers and things like that are different, uh, which means that you're getting two very different types of educations in, in one, uh, one degree, but it also means that it can be challenging. So. I want to leave you, and not sort of a, a, on, a, on a scary note, but I just I, I want to say that this is a challenging program. I think academically it's challenging because you have to get to know uh, and sort of you know master two different ways of approaching uh, uh, pedagogy, but also just you know sort of uh, the intellectual traditions, right? You have to do the American system, and then you got to go do the UK system, and that's those are two different things. And so academically that produces challenges. And then also it can be difficult, uh, challenging socially, right? So you, you come to William and & Mary and you, and you make friends and you join a club and you, and you like you know, all the things that Williamsburg has to offer. And there are many things to like about Williamsburg. And then you have to go to St. Andrews and you get to St. Andrews and it's like, oh, I gotta learn how to do everything all over again. I gotta meet new friends and this and that, right? So that also is challenging. And the students I think will have lots to say about how to sort of you know, deal with that. But the point is, is that both academically and socially, we put in sort of scaffolding and infrastructure to help you succeed, right? The, the, the goal of this, this program, or the goal, my, my goal anyway, is to, to have you succeed both academically and socially and really enjoy it. And then, and then leave this place with a really marketable uh, a degree that, you know, again, will open lots of doors down the road. So I think it's a very rewarding program. It is challenging, uh, but I think the challenge is actually probably one of the, the, the highlights of it. All right, I have, I have said way too much, way too long. I'm gonna turn it over to Katie so she can tell you a little bit from a student's perspective how this, this all works. Yeah, so thank you, Marcus. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Katie Weinsheimer. Um, I am a senior IR major within the joint degree program. I am currently studying at uh, William & Mary. I'm a William & Mary home student and I did the program like Marcus just explained doing A, B, B, A, which means that I started at William & Mary, I spent two years at St. Andrews, and then I finished at William & Mary. Um, and in q and I can explain my reasoning for doing that. But uh, essentially, it was because I wanted to develop a community where I was. Um, and I felt that was better served by staying in one place for two years. So I had some continuity over my entire educational experience. Um, but just when it comes to the social environment and social life at uh, William and & Mary and uh, St. Andrews, I think one thing that really helped me is just seeing them as very different institutions, as Marcus said, and embracing those differences. Um, at William & Mary, I am involved in the International Relations Club. I uh, am the registration director for William & Mary uh, middle school Maniwan conference. So I work with middle schoolers, which is super cool. Um, and then I'm also very involved in uh, my sorority. I'm in Alpha Chi Omega. So if you have any questions about, you know, uh, Greek life at William & Mary or doing Greek life at the program, I'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Um, but then when it came to St. Andrews, when I first got to St. Andrews, I tried to kind of replicate the friendships that I had at William & Mary try to replicate the experience. And I found that that didn't really work at all because they are very different institutions. Um, so I kind of recalibrated a little bit and decided, okay, I'm gonna do things that I, that I didn't get to do at William & Mary. Um, so I got really involved with theater. Um, I was involved in Mermaids Performing Arts Society. Um, it was something that I did in high school and then just didn't get a chance to do William & Mary, but I absolutely loved doing it at St. Andrews. 
I was also involved in the Money Men Club at St. Andrews, which is a bit different than it was at William & Mary, but it provided a little bit of continuity. Um, and then I was involved in Save the Children Society. Um, and so that was a charitable uh, club in which we worked for um, Save the Children International, raising uh, awareness about children right issues, um, as well as raising money for different causes throughout um, the terms. So that's kind of like what I was interested in, um, but different people are interested in different things. Um, and so different peer advisors or panelists will have different experiences on kind of what different programs are like and, and the experience at St. Andrews. I think for me, one thing that I really appreciated about the two different sides is I never get tired of where I am because I'm only there for a short period of time. So I think it's given me a sense of, of urgency and excitement in my college experience that some of my friends who are seniors at either institution are a bit tired, a bit ready to go from where they are, which can be a good thing in and of itself. Um, but for me, always having something new, always having a new experience was really nice. Um, I think when characterizing the difference between the two institutions, William & Mary and my personal experience was where I found my home. It's where I found my, my closest friends, my greatest community. Um, and St. Andrews was really the place where I was able to branch out, where I was able to have new experiences and have different groups of friends who would drag me on fun adventures. Um, but it didn't have that sense of community. Um, and that's just my personal experience. There are plenty of people who have the opposite reaction. Um, but I think having both gives you different experiences that I really appreciated. Um, and then kind of, if you have any more questions on that, I'm happy to answer it. But I think that's like the pithy response to the social life of the different schools. Um, I think the program itself provides a, a great sense of community. Um, I found my best friend and my roommate through the program. I, um, I'm, my boyfriend is also in the program. We've been dating for three years now um, across the different continents and stuff. Um, so that's been really fun. And it's just provided the sense of continuity that I was looking for when it came to juggling the two institutions, because when it comes down to it, no one really understands the program, like the students in the program. So when you're complaining about one institution, but you really like it, but you're complaining about it, the program students understand and they understand your struggles and they understand the social life and they understand academics um, and everything that you're going through, um, which is something that I really appreciated and kind of having that continuity was really important. When it came to why I joined the JDP, um, I was looking for, I looked at UK universities and I looked at US universities and I really wanted a typical US college experience, but I also really wanted to immerse myself in somewhere different and experience what it was, what it would be like to go to university abroad. Um, so I, I was like, okay, this will be, the opportunity to do both, the best of both worlds. Um, and I think sometimes it was the best of both worlds. And sometimes I felt like I was kind of getting a little bit of each in a way that wasn't necessarily the best. But when it came down to it, like I would totally recommend anyone do the program. I've loved my time in the program. And I think it's really helped me grow as uh, a person, both socially and academically and challenged me in ways that going to one or the other um, would not let me do and gave me different experiences that again, going to one or the other um, would not, not let me do. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them Q&A, but I'll turn it over to our other panelists. Perfect. Uh, Louise, you're next on the screen. Do you mind going? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Louise. I am, I'm a representing English majors here. Um, I'm also one of the peer advisors that Marcus talked about earlier in the presentation. So I help out a lot with um, people transitioning to William Mary and working through that. Um, I'm in the class of 21, which means I'm graduating this year and I chose the ABBA path um, like Katie did. Um, so I started off at William Mary and I spent the last two years in St. Andrews and now I'm back at William Mary. Um, for me, I needed to do this program when I saw it. Um, I went on a college tour with my older sister when I was in my freshman year of high school. 
And someone just offhandedly mentioned this at an admissions meeting. And I thought, wow, that is such an interesting thing. And I've always been in love with English and books and reading. And I knew that if I wanted to be an English student, this was the best possible thing I could do because it just has that it has that level of studying at two different universities, two very different styles. Like uh, Marcus mentioned that they're very different in terms of how they go about academics. And that's true for English as well. So they focus on depth a lot more at St. Andrews, whereas at William Mary, they focus on breadth and giving you a wide range of experiences. And I thought that would be a really interesting thing to base my academic experience on. And I can certainly say that coming to the end of it, it has been very, very interesting because I've had that experience with depth and I've had the last two years where I've really gotten to delve deep into very limited topics. And now I've come back to William Mary and I can broaden my knowledge again and take a lot of classes at once and have a really fun time with that. Um, in terms of my social experience, I, I also identify a lot with seeing William Mary as my home, but at St. Andrews, that was where I really had a lot of personal growth. Um, the, the fact that the program is such a, I guess it, it moves you around a lot and that leaves you a lot out on your own at some points. And you do have your program to fall back on and your friends in the program. And I certainly did that, but it also makes you realize a lot of things about yourself and kind of grow as a person because you're a lot more independent. You're forced a lot more to make your own choices, make your own decisions and figure out what's best for yourself because you don't necessarily have an entire college behind you. You have maybe 40 students in your year and you have your academic advisors and everything, but it's a lot smaller and therefore less people know what you're going through, like Katie said earlier, and therefore you're forced to figure that out yourself. And that's been a really rewarding experience in this program for me. And I think I can pass it off to someone else now. <laughs> Jenny, I think you're next on my screen. Do you mind going? Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny. I am a senior this year and a classical studies major. Um, on the classical studies um, major, um, there's two concentrations. There's Greek and Latin and ancient history and archaeology. And I am a Greek and Latin major but there are also a lot of ancient history and archaeology on pathway students in the program. I started um, in the same place and ended in the same place as Katie and Louise. I started at William Mary, did the ADBA um, way of doing things, and I finished at William and Mary. Why I chose the program is I was a um, full-time virtual high school student. I hadn't done anything the normal way so far, so I figured for college, um, make perfect sense to keep not being typical in that sense. So the joint degree program was a perfect fit for me. A couple of things I really like about it is it's just a double um, chance at everything. It is the challenge of a double orientation, double being new to a school, but there's also a lot of really great chances that you have. You have double the friends, double the professor contacts on both sides of the ocean. Both of the schools are really international. I have friends from all over the world and I never would have met most of them if I hadn't done the joint degree program. And it's also a really great way to stay out. Um, I knew I wasn't probably was gonna do some kind of graduate school um, when I was um, first applying to my undergraduate programs and everybody has, a everybody has a degree. But if you're applying to graduate school with a degree awarded by two institutions, that's something really unique and special that I think will help you stand out from the crowd. So that was why I decided to do the program. And Hannah, I think you're next on, on my screen. Do you mind sharing? Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a third year and I study film studies. I'm currently at St. Andrews, actually. Uh, William & Mary was my home school and I'm doing the ABBA um, track. So, you know, it's fun. It's good. I'm here. Uh, so when applying to colleges, um, I was very into it. I had a lot of fun. I had like those giant books that just had like hundreds and hundreds of colleges and I read them all and so then I'd make like a big list of like all the schools that seemed like fun different so I'm from New York and I was just like I really want to go far away from home so 
I found William and Mary and I found St. Andrew separately. I liked them both. I thought they were really like cool and interesting. And I was on the William and Mary website looking for a major that would interest me, obviously film studies. And then I saw film studies joint degree with St. Andrews and I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. Um, then I applied and then after like looking at everywhere I got accepted to, I'm like, the only thing in place I wanna go is to do this program. It just seemed really like fun and interesting and just a very unique experience that would not really be able to get literally anywhere else. All right, cool, cool. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Grant. I'm from Long Island, New York, and I am a history major uh, graduating this year. It doesn't seem real and it's slightly scary. Uh, like some of the other people who uh, have spoken, I did the ABBE track, uh, starting out at William Mary, going to St. Andrews for two years. And uh, I'll, offer, I'll offer a counter example. I feel like St. Andrews, honestly, <laughs> sort of became my home within the program as much as I love both universities. Um, and I would say I, I chose the JDP because I sort of had a very open mind coming into university. Um, sure, I had um, traveled around uh, the US a little bit, but I was very much in the mindset of college is a time where I want to really just explore new experiences, uh, study history intensely. Um, and I was like, okay, there's a program that where I'll live in Virginia for two years, move around and be in Scotland. Well, sure, let's do it. Um, so it's, it's really an experience you don't get anywhere else. Uh, there's the fact that when you're going to two different universities, especially uh, universities in different countries, uh, you're just getting a lot of different cultural experiences, like Louise mentioned, academic experiences. I've studied history very intensely at both universities. Like here at William Mary, I've taken courses on uh, the American South. Uh, right now I'm working on my honors thesis on uh, the history of the Beach Boys, which I'm very excited about and can never shut up about. Um, and at St. Andrews, uh, I really got that uh, depth. Um, I got to write on like intellectual history and East Asian history, which was a ton of fun. Uh, and at both institutions, I was able to get really involved in various, in the activities. Um, uh, I'm a peer advisor, as are some of the other people here. Uh, I'm also editor in chief of our historical journal. Uh, it's, a, it's a point of pride and a lot of fun. Uh, and I also got um, super involved into um, both social and competitive ballroom dance at both universities. Uh, sadly, it's not working out right now because of COVID, but it was it was a really fun time. It's, it's one of those cases where I did um, the same activity over two universities, but uh, was able to have two different approaches, even to extracurriculars. At William and Mary, I learned how to dance with people. Uh, at St. Andrews, I uh, traveled around and did tons of competitions. And like Louise said, it's really a program of both personal growth and academic growth. I've grown immensely since entering the program. Uh, I've sort of learned to welcome uh, all sorts of opportunities and fun wherever, they can, wherever I can find them. And um, as I'm applying now to master's and doctoral programs, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm confident in what, in what I've done and what I've achieved in the program. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all for sharing those experiences and your reasons for the joint degree program. It looks like we have a great amount of questions come in. Um, I'm sure directed to everybody on this panel, panel today. And just a reminder to everybody listening in, please feel free to direct your questions to the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. I know a few people drop them in the chat, but they can get buried easily in the chat. So please feel free to drop them all in the Q&A and we'll go through those now, I'll moderate. I might, you know, uh, pose questions to all of our panelists or just a few or a specific major. Um, so let's just get started. Okay, it looks like we have quite a few uh, questions asking if you can double major or major and minor in the program. Um, the answer to those, uh, you cannot double major in the program. You cannot double major in the program, but you can minor in anything William Mary has to offer. You just have to make sure to let your advisor know, you know, right that first year so you can make sure to fit it in um, during your within the program. And then um, some other questions. So it looks like we have a question um, posed about what is the most daunting thing about the joint degree program? 
And then um, I know kind of everybody's been sharing what's been the most rewarding, you know, yeah, you definitely have that global mindset, but uh, what's, what's the da most daunting thing about the Joint Review Program? And I'll pose that to the students if anybody would like to answer that from their perspective. I can take a stab at this one. Sure. Um, for me, I am a bit more shy and I don't have an easy time making friends with people um, just offhand, like it takes me a bit longer. So the prospect of going to, so at William Mary, I was just a traditional freshman, you know, it felt very much like I was just a William Mary student my first year, I went through orientation and that kind of shakes everyone together very effectively, especially when you really identify with being a first year. But the second year we had to go through orientation again and it was really nice because we were given that opportunity to kind of be freshmen over again and go to a lot of orientation events and meet new people but for me it felt slightly different because i was a second year and i'd already done this once and i was a bit homesick for william mary i missed being back there and i missed the friends i'd made back there so that was very daunting coming into the program but the great thing is a, the program provides such a good support system. So I had people who I would talk to within the program who are going through the exact same thing as me and we could kind of support each other through that. And B, you're going to make friends. Like it's just a, it's just a fact. If you're at a school, if you're at an institution, if you're going to classes, then eventually you're going to make friends there. And maybe it'll take a bit longer because you might be a bit more sad, but it happens and I made a very strong group of friends at St. Andrews and I still chat with them to this day. So it was very daunting to begin with, but it's definitely something that doesn't hold you back. Okay. And then um, let's see, we've had quite a few questions about um, if you apply to the joint degree program through William & Mary and also apply um, to St. Andrews for just their normal admissions, not the joint degree program, do you check the box no to the JDP on the St. Andrews side? I um, hope that makes sense and I'll kind of delve a little bit further into that. But yes, you would check no for the joint degree program when applying to St. Andrews because you can't apply to the joint degree program through both universities. You can certainly apply to the joint degree program through William & Mary, as well as apply to St. Andrews just for their general program of studies, but not the joint degree at both. Um, you have to pick one and it works the other way around. If you apply to the joint degree program through St. Andrews, you can't apply to the JDP through William & Mary, but you can certainly apply to just William & Mary in general. And then uh, let's see um, some other questions. Um, so uh, we had some questions about, you know, how competitive is this program um, acceptance rate and then when students are notified of the acceptance that's kind of three different questions in terms of acceptance rate we don't have an overall acceptance rate of the program because it changes each year. Um, but in terms of the competitiveness of the program it's a pretty competitive program, um, just because you're applying to William & Mary first of all. You first have to be admitted to William & Mary and then you're reviewed for the program and then there's that competitiveness coming into the program. And we try to have about 25 to 30 students in the program each year through what the Wayne Mary side. Um, and that's hopefully about five per major. Um, so that kind of gives you just the numbers and it's, it's a pretty competitive program. And then um, in terms of when students are notified of their JDP acceptance, because we've had quite a few uh, questions about that and that's a great question. Students are notified of their joint degree program acceptance um, by the second week of April. So it could be a little sooner than that, but it's by the second week of April. Now this applies to even students applying early decision to William Mary, and they also apply the joint degree program, um, they would still find out in April. Um, so they might find out their early decision to William and Mary in December or February if you apply ED2, but you still won't find out your joint degree program um, decision until that, that first or second week of April. Um, if you're applying regular decision, um, sometimes you can find out really soon after that because regular decision you find out by the first week of April um, with William and Mary, but hopefully that gives you a good timeline of that. Um, and then some some other questions. Um, is, is the joint degree program open to transfer students? So um, it's kind of seen on a case-to-case -case basis with transfer students um, because typically transfer students are transferring after their first year. Um, and in that case, they can't um, transfer into the, the joint degree program if they're transferring to William & Mary. Um, now you can certainly transfer into the program your freshman year, let's say you're a freshman at William & Mary, um, or you are 
a student applying as a spring transfer your freshman year. Um, so if that makes sense and you're applying to the spring um, semester at William & Mary, there is the possibility you can um, apply and transfer into the joint degree program. That is just seen on a case-to-case -case basis and we look at how many spots are available as well as how many spots in that particular major. Um, so if you're a transfer student interested in this program and you're transferring from another university, or a community college, just keep in mind, um, you would have to be transferring into um, a second semester freshman year, basically. And then let's see, um, here's a question. And I think um, you all can answer this experiencing, you know, being students within the program, but given the situation with COVID, um, how has the program adapted and, and kind of, how has it been uh, this, this past year? Y'all kind of speak to that. Hannah, I know you're at St. Andrews now. Uh, maybe you can kind of give some context there. Sure. So academically, it's like half in person, half online. So normally I'm in honors year. So my third year, you would have for film studies, like one two hour seminar per class per week. But now they've like split it up. So it's like two one hour seminars. One's in person, one's online um, for both classes. And it's like, more team taught. So normally you'd have like one professor teaching the class, but now it's like you have two and they do it together, which is a lot of fun because it's cute. They make like jokes and you just like laugh behind your screen. You're like, ha ha ha, how funny, how funny. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's good. I mean, they've adjusted pretty well, I think. I think on the William and Mary side, they've also done a pretty good job about adjusting and um, making changes for COVID. Um, as an IR major, I all my classes were online this semester. I don't think that's, I'm not the rule, nor am I the exception. It's just happened how it happened, the classes that I wanted. Um, the professors just decided that it would be better in an online format. Um, but I really enjoyed it because the professors were, were very accommodating and very understanding that this was a weird semester and things weren't going to run as normal. Um, so professors were amendable to changing the schedule and changing deadlines throughout the semester or trying to make it easier for us or really meeting us where we were. Um, I decided to come back to Williamsburg for the community aspect, even though all my classes were online. Um, and I really enjoyed that as well because it gave me the community aspect. And I think a lot of students here um, were very committed to staying safe with COVID protocols, but also um, making the best of the situation. A lot of picnics on the Sunken Gardens, a lot of like bonfires um, and those sorts of things. And then through the peer advisors throughout the semester, we hosted events that were both in person and virtual. So we did you know, pub quizzes minus the pub, you had to bring your own pub with you. Um, or we did uh, walks through CW, or we got permission through the school to register our students and do a big movie night in one of the lecture halls. Um, and so I think throughout the semester, both the administration and the students have been really committed to kind of making the best of the situation. Yeah, and uh, just speaking to peer advising, uh, I can speak for myself and uh, my fellow peer advisors that we've done quite a bit of work to try to help out uh, the new freshmen as much as we can. Uh, we've been holding uh, personal one-to-one -one check ins as well as uh, virtual office hours, um, game nights, socials, that kind of thing. So we've been, we've been working on that. One thing I've been really grateful for too, um, especially during this um, time is the continuity of my major advisor. She's been a really, really helpful resource, um, just making sure I'm in the right classes, checking in on me, make sure I'm succeeding in everything. So I think that was also, um, I think I could probably speak for the other students too, that the major advisors are a really indispensable part of your experience and especially now also really helpful during the, um, this COVID era. <laughs> Great, thank you for sharing all those. And then um, we, we've had some questions about um, how, how difficult is it to adjust, readjust to William & Mary after being away for, for two years. I think uh, most, if not all of you are the ABBA track, um, but how difficult is it to readjust once you return? 
I would say it's certainly transition that doesn't really get a lot of attention. Um, we mostly talk about the transition from first year to second year because it's a big thing, but we don't necessarily talk about coming back to your home institution or if you do the AB, AB, how that feels um, returning over and over again. Um, I would say it's been difficult, but it hasn't been unmanageable because there is a very big academic culture difference between St. Andrews and William and Mary, where at William Mary, there was a lot more small assignments throughout. Um, professors are a lot more uh, involved in checking up on you, making sure you're doing okay. Whereas at St. Andrews, it's a lot more, you're a student, you're an academic, um, you are qualified enough to figure this out. Um, we will help you if you desperately need it. We will help you if you do need it, but you are a qualified individual who's gotten into university. Therefore, you should do what you can to figure out yourself. So it's a lot more independent at St. Andrews, whereas at William Mary, there are a lot more involved with your experience and that has certainly been a transition because i'm used to for english specifically how a lot of the courses are set up is you write two papers in a semester and then you have a final and that's all the work you do um, of course you have little assignments but none of them are graded so for the most part everything is in this one big essay or these two big essays throughout the semester whereas at William mary i've had a lot of smaller essays and a lot of smaller work to get done throughout like four or five papers due throughout a semester that are two or three pages long or something like that. So it's been a lot different is the best word I can describe, but I've done it before and all of us have done it before. All of us have been to William Mary before and this degree teaches you how to be very, very flexible, which is very nice. Like you did this transition once so you know you can do it again but it does take a month or two of adjusting to just figure out what you're expecting and what you might have forgotten from your first year. Yeah, and I think kind of building off of that um, point and kind of Marcus's point from earlier, they are very different institutions um, academically. And I learned a more social science perspective of IR at William & Mary my first year. Um, and I worked on a research lab over the summer. It was very involved in kind of that aspect of IR. And then I went to St. Andrews and they said, okay, forget about that. You're not doing that anymore. We're focusing on philosophy. We're focusing more on qualitative analysis um, and not necessarily a more scientific approach to IR. And then I got used to that and I was really into that. And I was like, okay, I really like this perspective. And then I come back to uh, William and Mary and they say, okay, forget about the theory, forget about the paradigms, they're useless. We're going to do data analysis. Um, and I complained to Marcus about this at the beginning of semester. I was like, this is dumb. I don't like this. This is terrible. And he told me as he always does that I was overreacting, which I was. Um, but I think kind of that flipping back and forth was actually quite useful um, because I now have a perspective in both. So as I'm applying for jobs, I can say, hey, I have research experience. Hey, I understand data analysis, but I also am a quite well-written student and I know how to kind of connect these philosophical components. Um, I think also just going on the social side, I um, was lucky in that I kept a really good contact with my friend group at William & Mary um, throughout my four years. I was involved in my sorority like group chats. And so I met people virtually that I didn't meet in person until this year. Um, and the same thing with um, my IR uh, club family. And so it's been great kind of jumping back into those friendships and getting to know those people again, and also getting to know like their friends or who are the year below me or two years below me and like meeting people that I should have met if I was here, but I wasn't. But they've been super welcoming and super accommodating and super like, oh, I really wanna get to know you. I've heard about you for two years. Now let's like actually meet each other. Um, so that's been super great. Uh, so yeah. And actually that kind of goes along with quite a few questions we were, we've received, um, excuse me, about, you know, can you keep in contact with your friends? So you just kind of answered that. Um, does anybody, excuse me, <coughs> ooh, swallowed some air. Um, does anybody else want to speak about kind of how you've kept in contact with your friends over at St. Andrews? Because I think um, a lot of our qu questions um, pertain to that side of things, like have you kept in contact with your your friends at St. Andrews um, and, and are you able to, you know, form those bonds while abroad? Yeah, uh, it's definitely um, a big feature of the program, and I guess this would also be the case for any study abroad. 
it's it's sort of more to do with you and how you approach the, your relationships. Like, as if, if you make, like, good enough friends and you make sure to keep in regular contact, especially with COVID where everything has been online, uh, you're, you're, you're usually good. Uh, I mean, I'm still in uh, the Facebook chat with um, all of my close friends from St. Andrews, and I, I still, I basically talk to them every day still. Awesome. And then um, we had um, a few questions about how, how does this program work for future employment opportunities? You know, how does this um, look for, for future career opportunities, kind of the pros there? Um, I know, Marcus, you kind of mentioned um, how there are so many resources through William and Mary and um, about how that can can lead to to opportunities after graduation. Um, so if, if you want to talk a little bit about that or students kind of want to talk about their experience with resources, that'd be great. Sure, I'll say a couple of things. I mean, I think one of the uh, values, the biggest one of the biggest values of the program is that for potential employers in graduate schools, they uh, look at this as a rigorous program that requires you to do things that that you know sort of normal college students don't have to do. So all the things that we've been talking about so far on the on the webinar, you know, sort of adjusting to these academic challenges, adjusting to these social challenges. Uh, I think you know em employers look at as marketable skills, which which I think really they are. Um, and I think increasingly, in addition to that, employers and, and graduate schools are interested in having students with some international. Uh, experience and this is not you know this is not a study abroad program where you go to you know Paris for four months and and, and then that's that I mean you're spending two years uh, you know away from home so if you're, if you're home in the United States anyway uh, away from home and I think that that uh, is is an important experience that is that it, that employers take seriously so um, one of the things that I've been struck by uh, recently in particular is, is how marketable students have been not just in the United States, but also the UK. So there, there are uh, Americans who, who do this program who then go get jobs in, in London. Um, and there are people who in this program, you know, go to great uh, uh, PhD programs precisely because of, of some of the things that Katie was talking about, right? Where they're able to speak to uh, a number of different literature. So, you know, one student in particular I'm thinking of, uh, they're gonna do a dissertation in political science um, based on, you know, sort of combining the, the social science sort of things that we do at William and Mary, and then the more philosophical tradition at, at St. Andrews. And, you know, she was able to, to create this dissertation idea um, because of that. I mean, it's, that's not only because of the program, obviously, it's, you know, because she's quite smart, uh, but that, that helped her sort of get to that place. And so, you know, I've just been struck, uh, you know, with, with how, how well our students do. And I think it's because of the, the rigors of the program. And I think it's, it's one of these situations where uh, employers and graduate schools realize that, that what you guys are, are endeavoring upon, you know, it's not easy, uh, it's difficult, it's challenging. And then the, the sort of international aspects of it, I think, um, you know, make it particularly appealing to, to employers as well. I'm applying to both um, law schools and John um, Master of Education programs, and I would um, really my biggest support of research, um, biggest resources and support so far have been my professors. Um, they've been super willing and helpful um, to write me with um, write me recommendations and offer their support to um, read my letters or help me out with um, resumes, things like that. So that was something that really stuck out to me is the William Mary professors um, really went. Um, went out of their way to help me out with that. And St. Andrews too, unfortunately, um, I didn't get to be um, all of them quite as much because um, of coronavirus in the um, spring, but they were also, I also had some professors that were really nice and helpful and willing to help me out with um, some scholarships and things I was after as well. And kind of going with that, um, for me, I found, so what helped me a lot get my internship last summer was just like my experiences that I had at both schools. So obviously I study film studies. So I try to like do a little bit of whatever has to offer. So last year, um, there was this big student run festival at St. Andrews called On the Rocks. And I was on the programming committee for that and did a lot of work for that. And like that, and then combined with all like the festival, like film festival stuff I did at William and Mary, when I was like applying for my internships, everyone was just like so impressed that I had all these like unique experiences that other people at like one university couldn't necessarily talk about because these are just like opportunities we get just from inherently being at more universities that have very different societies and clubs and events, which is really cool. Yeah, 
Great, thank you. And then uh, we have um, some questions about, can, can you opt to just stay at William Mary um, your four years if you decide not to do the program after you're admitted to the program? Um, I'll go ahead and address this to, to the attendees, but um, yes, the, the program is not binding. So let's say you um, attend our admitted student programs, you've been attended to, or you've been admitted to the joint degree program and you just, you decide you fall in love with William Mary, you wanna spend all four years there, um, that's certainly possible. So the, the program's not binding, it's when you begin to get on track. Um, I know we had one specific question about, you know, can I drop the program once I go to St. Andrews for my second year? You know, I just, I spend time there and I decide I wanna go back to William Mary. I'm not as familiar with that process. Marcus, I don't know if you know if that's happened. Um, do you mind addressing that one? Sure. So um, if you apply through William and Mary, as we, as we said before, you're, you're admitted to William and Mary first in a JDP uh, program after that. So you always, as a William and Mary home student, have the option of transferring out of the program. And so typically this happens in the, in the first year. You know, you get to William and Mary and for, for whatever reason, um, you really like it in Williamsburg. You have a great group of friends. You just be like, I, I don't really want to do this. I, I don't want to go to St. Andrews. And there are, you know, uh, cases where this happens. And it, it's fine. You, you just transfer out of the program and then you, you will move to a, an un, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Undeclared major. Uh, and you will in your sophomore year declare a major like, like everybody else and, and you're sort of on your way. So it's definitely possible. Uh, students have in the past transferred out post their first year because a little bit more difficult in the sense that, you know, you, you have these credits and then, uh, you know, you got to figure out how the credits are going to line up with your new major and things like that. But it is, it is possible to, to transfer out after your, your first year as well. Um, these, you know, the, the one sort of exception to this is if you apply through the St. Andrews side, because they, their admissions work a little bit differently, you are admitted first to uh, the JDP program at St. Andrews, not to St. Andrews just generally. So if you go that route and you're admitted through St. Andrews, it becomes a little bit trickier. Uh, transferring out because you actually have to apply to St. Andrews because you were never admitted to St. Andrews in the first place. I know it sounds a little strange how it works, but that's just the, the mechanism behind how this works. So if you're a St. Andrews home student and you want to transfer out to St. Andrews, uh, it becomes a little bit more of a, of a difficult proposition, but it's also doable. Um, but they will ask you to apply and they'll look at your grades and things like that. If you're a William Mary home student, uh, transferring out is, is not, not a problem. And then I will say too, we also, there is the chance that you could defer um, your, your um, acceptance of the program for a year. Um, so you can't do it for a semester, but you can do it for, for one year. Um, so we have to consider that as well. Um, and then let's see, we have questions about um, kind of the learning curve while also like the teaching style. So can students, can you speak about um, the teaching styles at both universities? And what that's been like, how different that's been, or or not so different. Right. Um, I I would say at least for history, um, it's sort of like the depth versus breadth thing. Um, whereas at William Mary, you're taking more classes and uh, sort of a variety of things. Where in St. Andrews, you're really focusing on uh, the two three classes you're taking. Um, but there are methodological differences in how they approach things. Uh, for history in particular, I won't get to the nitty gritty and for everyone, but uh, stuff like different approaches to sources, different approaches to scholarship. Um, so it can, it, it can be a bit tricky adjusting, but it's a matter of doing your due diligence, uh, chatting with the peer advisors, uh, going to professorial office hours, sort of figuring out what you need to do. And I will say, um, you're just generally better as a student uh, if you're when you're able to pick up both approaches because there's definitely, there's definitely stuff I, uh, I pulled off at St. Andrews and stuff I pulled out here that um, uh, impressed professors because <laughs> I was drawing upon my training from uh, the other university. So I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> I do also wanna comment on the way the classes are structured a bit differently. So at St. Andrews, they call the first two years sub honors, which just means you have um, larger classes. So they're set up as lecture halls where essentially there's no limit on who can take a class. Um, and so for my first class there, I was in a lecture hall with like 200 people and you meet three times a week. And then you have what are called tutorials, which are these smaller groups that meet independently. And they're like 10 to 20 students with just um, one, usually a PhD student. They can also be a professor of some sort. Um, and they just break down everything you've learned that week. Um, and the larger lecture halls, they alternate who speaks to you. 
So you'll have basically the expert in whatever novel you're looking at or whatever subject you're looking at speaking to you. Um, so for English specifically, that changes every single week where you might have one person lecturing for three days and the next week, another person lecturing for three days. Whereas at William Mary, it's smaller classes. So um, usually 20 people or 25 people. And this is different for other majors, but um, for some of the more humanities majors, you have a lot smaller classes and it's more discussion based or more open to just conversation between students. Um, so there is a very big difference for some of the class structures from here to St. Andrews, but it equalizes a bit more once you get to your honors or the last two years where for English at least classes are capped at 20 people. So they're a lot smaller and they're set up a lot more like William Mary classes are. Um, but of course this changes from major to major. It's just important to note that the classes are differently structured sometimes. I personally had a really smooth academic um, transition. I think I'm part of that, um, at least credits to my um, background as a virtual high school student because I was already used to teaching myself and learning the material. Um, I don't think it's like the majority opinion anyway. It might also have been based on the classes I took on um, primarily on um, four out of my six classes at St. Andrews were on um, Latin and Greek language classes that um, I actually um, personally didn't find it like um, super independent, at least um, I, for my Greek and Latin classes, I had classes like four or five days a week, but again, not, um, that is pretty normal for languages, but for other classes, um, if you're taking like an English class or history class, that is um, not really usually quite the case. Usually you have um, less, fewer classes than that at St. Andrews. Um, and in terms of the difficulty, um, I know some students, at least that, um, you guys can correct me if um, you have that your experiences were different. I've heard like a lot of students say the third year at St. Andrews is most difficult. I personally found the um, second year at St. Andrews on um, um, sophomore year, first year there to be the most challenging. Um, but once again, I think just maybe the classical studies um, seems to be a, go a little bit opposite and contrary to what um, some of the other majors experience. So I just thought I'd throw that, up, throw that out there in case anybody was thinking about doing that. you and then um let's see we have some questions about just course requirements for different majors you know especially people ask me well in this major what are the course requirements and i'll just point out we do have a website that breaks down you know you can click on the different majors and find out the the course requirements um we've had quite a few um international relations specific questions about um we have one specific question um, how often do you get perspectives that aren't um, American centric or Euro centric um, in your classes, um, specifically for international relations? So, Katie, I don't know if you can um, speak to that as an international relations major. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that the program and, and both universities do a good job about giving you different perspectives um, and giving you kind of another take and not focusing spe specifically on the Western world. Um, I think it's something that can always be improved upon, but that both uh, institutions are actively looking into and actively working towards. Um, I think that they approach the issue of diversity of perspectives differently. Um, William and Mary, because it's a positivist institution, the research that it gets, which means basically it's like a social science. They're trying to prove something through a hypothesis and a thesis. Um, that's a very US perspective um, IR in general around the world in like Europe or um, in Asia, for example, tends to be a little bit more um, kind of theoretical as Marcus was talking about, but they do offer different perspectives and authors um, from China or Singapore or India, for example. Um, and then when I was at St. Andrews, um, I their Middle Eastern history department and their Middle Eastern IR department is absolutely amazing. Um, and so I took a class on um, order and violence in the Middle East, um, which was super fascinating and a very cool class. Um, and St. Andrews really did give me different perspectives when it came to IR and focusing not just on um, the Western world. So yeah. Uh, I'll go on my way and say history is um is a fairly easy subject to make diverse uh, in both William and Mary and St. Andrews. Um, 
just speaking directly to the subject, uh, William and Mary uh, has uh, really good focuses, especially on uh, American history and within American history uh, categories like uh, class, race, gender, um, as well as um, I, I took uh, courses on East Asia here that were tons of fun. Um, we have courses on Africa, South America, uh, really a little bit of everything. Um, I don't want to call St. Andrews more Eurocentric, but it's more their focus is more oriented towards uh, medieval history and European history. But there's some there's some really great courses offered in terms of uh, Middle Eastern studies, uh, and one professor there, Conrad Lawson, uh, is particularly good with East Asian history, South Asian history too. Uh, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> One thing I can add in terms of the classes you're going to be taking is you're not necessarily, even though a lot of your credits, um, probably like between 50 and 60 of your um, total, like 120 credits in the program are going to be in within your major. You also do you have a chance to take electives and you also have some additional requirements called breadth requirements. Um, these ensure that you're just getting the um, breadth out of the um, breadth versus depth experience that you're also getting you experience a couple classes in um, subjects like math or science, history, language, etc. Um, and basically I want to throw out there too, uh, really um, the more credits you come out, come in with, I think that kind of helps too. Um, the more if you come in with a lot of AP credits, they don't necessarily um, transfer over. You, don't, you still start at zero, but they can be applied to the requirements and that would give you, if you come in with those fulfilled, that would give you more opportunity for electives outside of your major. Or, take more within your major too. We've had a couple of questions of people asking, um, can you do other study abroad programs, even if you're in the joint degree program? So during the summers, for instance, can you um, do, do other study abroad programs? I, I'm not sure on this. Um, Marcus, I don't know if you know, I know you have a lot of opportunities to travel when you're at St. Andrews. So a lot of students take advantage of that, you know, take weekend trips. Um, I believe you can, uh, but do you want to kind of take this question? <laughs> sure, it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, we, uh, in the program, we don't accept transfer credit from other schools, so you would not get the credit, you know, so if you did some sort of program in uh, France, let's say, over the summer at the Sorbonne or, you know, and you wanted to apply that credit to the program, we would not uh, accept that credit. And and so you can you can certainly do a, a program if you wanted, but there wouldn't be any way to sort of transfer that credit in. And the reason for this is, you know, just incidentally that that both schools when creating this program thought it was really important that students spend two years uh, in both places. So we didn't want to have a situation where you know students were transferring a bunch of credit and they could get away with you know graduating with having only spent one year at St. Andrews or only one year at William and Mary. The intention from the beginning was really to make it so that uh, students are, are spending both uh, two years at, at each at each place. And so for that reason, there are some requirements in the program that you wouldn't see uh, just for a regular William & Mary student. So for example, as just mentioned, you know, AP credit uh, will allow you to get out of uh, certain breadth requirements that we have, but we won't accept that credit towards the overall number of credits that you need to graduate for the same reason. We, we want you to spend two years at, at both places. So transfer credit in a study abroad sense, um, you know, is it kind of falls into that category where it would be essentially transfer credit. Now, I, I saw in the chat somebody was asking about a, a, a summer program at St. Andrews. That I've never, that's never uh, been something that's crossed my desk. I don't know how exactly how that would work if you're in the JDP program doing a summer exchange program at St. Andrews. But if it's St. Andrews credit, I would imagine we could find a way to make it work. Um, but in, in same way, if you wanted to do study abroad. Uh, or a summer session at William & Mary, I want to be studying abroad, uh, that credit counts as well. It's just, you know, so William & Mary credit's fine, St. Andrews credit's fine. It's more uh, the transfer credit from outside schools during the summer or, or any time towards the program doesn't, doesn't work. The only other thing I'll say, uh, just on the, on the requirements side, I saw a couple questions that have come up about this. Um, you should look at the website because the requirements for the program are distinct. In other words, you know, William & Mary has something called a call curriculum. And so you might see a lot about that on the, on the website. Uh, the JDP program has a separate curriculum because it's, it's a unique program. Um, it would be difficult to fulfill all the call requirements spending two years away from William and Mary. And, and, you know, for a bunch of different reasons, we have our own sort of set of requirements. Some of them are very similar to the call uh, program. And in, in one case, you, you do take a call class uh, as part of the requirements, but they're, they're not the same. And so 
um, I would encourage you to go on that website and look at the general requirements. And then we also go through the various majors and the specific classes that are required for those majors, just to get a sense of, of what you would be taking um, in terms of required classes. But as, as a student has said before, all of the majors have uh, flexibility with respect to electives and, and breadth requirements, but it's still useful to go and, and see what the general requirements per major uh, actually are. Thank you. And um, we've had quite a few questions about residence life at both um, and kind of comparing the two, you know, what's it like at both universities? Can you students kind of talk about maybe just a few differences, um, a few similarities between residence life at both? Yeah, sure. Um, so I've lived both uh, on and off campus. Um, so I'll speak a bit to this. Um, at William and Mary, uh, William Mary is a very residential campus. It's possible to live uh, off campus, of course, but uh, from my understanding, there's generally more people in residence halls. And when you live on campus, there's kitchens available, but you'll generally get a meal plan uh, that you can um, use at the three dining halls here, as well as uh, some auxiliary food options. At St. Andrews, when you're taking your, when you're uh, moving into a residence hall there, um, the catering is sort of built in, so you will eat um, in the hall that you were living in. Uh, and I guess off campus, it's more of like an ad hoc thing that you need to figure out yourself. It's, it's more popular in St. Andrews than it is at William Mary, quite popular in St. Andrews, actually. Um, I, I, I very much enjoyed living off campus. The, pro uh, the process of negotiating uh, rent and finding a place is a bit tricky. But uh, in my case, it worked out quite well. Uh, I very much miss my house. We called it the Grand Budapest Hotel. But um, yeah, uh, it, it, I guess it really depends on the kind of lifestyle you want to leave, lead at either school. It, it really depends more on that than any sort of academic concerns. So yeah, so kind of to go into that, at William and Mary, especially your first year, you're gonna have a roommate. That's great. I love my first year roommate. She was also in the, pro she's still in the program. She's at William and Mary right now. Um, lovely, great. At St. Andrews, more often than not, unless you specifically choose to have a roommate, you will be in a room by yourself, which let me tell you, best thing ever. Amazing, amazing. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Love my roommate, but wow. Um, and so usually like that, depending on the hall, they're all in different layouts. So it might be like, apartment style with four or five other like random St. Andrews students. Or in my case, it's like, I'm in a weird building, but there's like eight of us kind of in a little like section, each have our own rooms. And then they have like the main sections of the hall and everything like that. And then there's also just like the normal hall style, except you have your own room usually. Yeah. And yeah, for me, I'm going to counter Hannah's point that she just told you about best best thing ever not having a roommate um i had a roommate at william and mary my first year um really enjoyed that experience and then going into second year i was a bit nervous about like being in a new place all on my own um and so i actually roomed with someone in the program um we linked up and we're just like oh we're really good friends we've formed a relationship over this freshman year do you want to live together next year um, and I absolutely loved it. It helped that my room somehow was massive, the most amount of space that I'll ever have in my life with like 16 foot ceilings. And that's not everyone's opportunity or experience. That's just how it worked out for me. Um, but I really enjoyed having someone to push me to go out to, um, you know, kind of comfort me when I was feeling homesick for William and Mary, and also just to encourage me to experience all that St. Andrews had to offer. Um, and that was just my personal experience. And then my um, third year in St. Andrews, I got a house also with JDP students um, and we like negotiated a lease. Most adulting experience ever. I had to like argue with our landlord and fight like the electric company when they're overcharging us and like figure out all these adulting things that I would have never had to figure out um, if I wasn't in the program. And then this year um, I'm living off campus through friends that I met through mutual friends. None of us had lived before, um, like met each other, lived in the same house room um, before. And we just kind of all met, we were all looking for housing, all wanted to live off campus. Um, and I've absolutely loved that experience too. Um, some of the halls also have their own spirit at St. Andrews. 
So because you all eat together, you all eat in the same room, like the dining halls are basically located on the first floor or like in a room slightly away from wherever you live, but they are linked to whoever lives in the hall. So you have to eat with the people you live with and it creates this much tighter bond than usually happens in William Mary um, residence halls. So I lived in one where there were about less than 200 people living in the hall um, and everybody knew everybody and there were just hall events where everyone would get together and you know third years would befriend the new freshmen and would help them through and um, it's just everyone lives together at St. Andrews so it's like first years live with second third and fourth years depending on the hall um, which means you get to interact with a lot of people from different points in their degrees while William Mary it's very much you live with a freshman hall your first year and then afterwards you kind of pick where you live and you can pick places where you live near people you know, but for the most part, if you're living on campus, you're living slightly isolated and your social circle um, is dependent on clubs and um, classes and things like that, but less so where you live. Thank you. Thank you all for those perspectives. And then uh, we had a couple questions about um, research opportunities and specifically, you know, what kind of research opportunities are available to JDP students and then does being in the program help those opportunities or does it make it a little more difficult to, to pursue research? Uh, I'll throw in my view of history. Uh, it really depends on uh, how, do you define re how you define research and what you're going for. Uh, at least at William & Mary, there's a lot, there are tons of opportunities to um, work directly with professors or pursue your own research. Um, I took a class with uh, Jerry Watkins in the history department during the history in the South. I thought he was really cool. I went to his office and I was like, do you need a research assistant? And he was like, yeah, uh, how about you work for me over the summer? I will pay you. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, so <laughs> with COVID funding might end up a bit tighter and stuff, but if I can accomplish that as a freshman, like I can only imagine what you can do as a sophomore, junior and senior here. Uh, and also in terms of things like independent research and theses, um, at least uh, the history department here, um, as well as the Charles Center, um, has uh, a lot, lots of funding allocated uh, to um, research. Uh, there, there's funding for conferences if you want to attend those, travel. Uh, you just need to look them up, really, um, and there's tons available. Uh, even for, uh, for honors thesis, theses in particular, I, I, I think Louise can speak a bit to this, but you can apply to up to thousands of dollars to conduct, um, to fund your research and to purchase materials. Uh, I've also recently gotten a research grant for my Beach Voice thesis. Uh, 300 bucks, I can buy archival materials and music magazines off eBay, so I'm quite happy. Uh, with St. Andrews, I would say, at least for history, it's a bit trickier to get the kind of um, direct work with professors, but if you're, if you're just doing research for class, uh, uh, your professor is very much will help you. And there's definitely cool material uh, in and around uh, St. Andrews in Scotland, um, should you want to conduct stuff for class. Uh, you will have to get a bit more creative if you're looking more for like uh, straight one-to-one -one faculty research though. Um, and of course, uh, writing for the Historical journals at both universities is always an option. I've been uh, I've been an editor for both of them, so I'll throw that out there. Thanks. And um, I know yeah, actually, oh, I was just going to do one other thing. So, uh, in addition to what Grant said, there are um, a, there's a small grant fund that the GDP program itself has. So we we put out a call for applications in the fall and the spring, and also the summer. So uh, if you have a specific you know, I mean, back when we were traveling, it was a lot of people were going to conferences or they needed to go so, to a museum or something like that. That That's the type of, of thing that we can fund. In addition to that, one of the things that I think William & Mary does extremely well is um, undergraduate, providing as many different undergraduate research experiences as, as possible. So for students who are interested in, in um, working through like a, a lab type environment or working in uh, like an institute, there's something called the Global Research Institute, which houses many different projects. Uh, they tend to be sort of economics and international relations focused, some, some history as well. Um, but that, that's an institute at William & Mary that a lot of JDP students will 
um, do research through, some of which have sort of summer paid uh, internship type programs, others run through the course of the, the school year, um, but you can, you can sort of look into that if, if you want. There, and then also professors run labs. So I run a, a lab in political psychology and international relations, and I you know, have, have JDP students in my lab. Um, it becomes a little bit more difficult when they go to St. Andrews because they're doing research you know, from, from across an ocean and sort of keeping tabs and, on back and forth it can be a little bit challenging, but, but we make it work. Um, so I'd say any, any of the sort of resources that are available to William and Mary students uh, in terms of undergraduate research are also available to, to JDP students. And then we also have this other grant program that uh, is just specific to the JDP. Great. Okay, I know we have about five minutes left. Um, and for, for those that haven't had their questions answered today, um, we've put um, our emails by our name. So feel free to reach out um, with any further questions. And then we also have our meet a major page under undergraduate admission at wm.edu, where you can uh, scroll down and you'll find the joint degree program. Um, contacts and um, I know we don't have an econ major on the on the panel today, but there is an econ contact there on the page, um, so you can always reach out with any questions specifically uh, to different majors. Um, but with those uh, those five minutes left, um, we've gotten some great questions about what tips do you have, you know, when applying to the program. What what would you have wanted to know before applying to the program? Um, I'll I'll just say from purely admission um, perspective um, and applying to the program, when you're writing that essay, we do wanna know that um, not only will you be a good fit for the program, but that the program will be a good fit for you. You know, that you know what the program's all about and you have this, this passion or interest in the major. Um, and we wanna know that you'll be successful in the program. So um, certainly addressing that in your essay is, is my tip um, to you all. But if, if you all could kind of, um, just give your your advice to students applying to the program that would be great and we can start with with Marcus and kind of just work our way around to the students too. I mean my advice uh, Caroline would be very similar to yours. so I, I read all the uh, admissions essays and, and that's the the thing that I look for is is fit with the program um, and it can be kind of hard obviously you know as applying to a program because you don't know exactly what it's going to be like for the next four years and we have more you know knowledge of that than, than you do but I, I think that the things that Caroline mentioned you know, sort of demonstrating that you've done research on the program, uh, that you understand that you're going to go to St. Andrew for two years, that you understand sort of the, the academic and social challenges. Those are all the types of things that, that I look for uh, anyway, as well as, you know, sort of people that, that you know, sort of have a mindset uh, that, that, you know, this will be a, a fun challenge that they're, they're looking uh, to take on. So that's, that's my personal uh, advice. Just be yourself, you know, and, and, and sort of show us that you want to do this. That's, that's really the main thing. Uh, and, and I think you'll, you'll be fine. I would say some advice I have is just be passionate and let your passion show. Like, of course, do your research and everything, but passion is probably the number one thing that is important in just making it through this program. Like if you're passionate about this program and about your major and about what you're studying and about everything you're doing, then this program is going to be a breeze. Um, like it'll have challenging parts, but passion is just the most important thing for me. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. Just um, go into it, keeping an open mind, try to express who you are in a, in a fun way. And if it makes any of you all more comfortable, uh, I'm applying to grad programs at the moment and I'm just going to talk about like my love for the beach boys and historical methods. So just, just, just be, be yourself, put your, put your best, put the best version of yourself forward as you can. So, oh, sorry, Kate. Okay, um, I would just kind of build off of Louise's point, just be enthusiastic about the program and about why you want to join the program. Um, I talked about how I loved traditions and I just was so excited to join the traditions of both schools. This is not to say write your essay about traditions. This is just to say find something that makes you super excited about the program and write about that and connect that to your passions and you as a person, I think, is just kind of what shows is what you're interested in and what you're passionate about and what you're enthusiastic about. Um, so if you think about what you want to get out of the program and what you're excited about, um, then just write about that. My yeah, advice so, 
My advice um, to seniors is um, really for everybody, um, whether you're an AP or IB, really study hard for those classes, whether you're in the joint degree program or you go somewhere else. The, um, if you um, score well in those, those credits are really going to come in handy. Um, no matter where you go, it's going to help you take electives, maybe it'll give you time to graduate early. Obviously not if you're in the joint degree program, you have to stay all four years for that. Or um, do it, have, maybe you have time doing double major if you're doing something else, or just in the case of the joint degree program, you'll have a chance to take a lot more electives. Um, personally, um, I would say if, you, um, if the opportunity comes up that you um, get to do the joint degree program, but you're not sure if you want to do William Leary or the program, I would say I would recommend just give it a shot. Um, it's a really great opportunity. You have a whole year to decide um, once you're admitted whether you want to go to St. Andrews or not. So. Um, if you love William Mary so much that you don't want to leave, that's one thing. But my sister is also in the program. She went, she loved William Mary, but she also went to St. Andrews and loved it too. Um, she says even more. So um, if given the opportunity, um, definitely take a um, think hard and give it a try. Yeah, so just to close off, pretty much what everyone's been saying, just write about why you want to do it and just be very honest about it. Because I mean, if, if this is something you sincerely want to do, it'll work, like it'll work out. Also, before I forget, so I am the um, external communications director on the WAMSTAs uh, for the St. Andrew side. So make sure to follow our Instagram. It's literally um, WAMSTAs, so W-A-M-S-T-A-S. -A -S. And then if you message that, you're messaging me and then another girl on the, Saint, on the uh, William & Mary side. And we can also like answer all your questions and like reach out to people who we think might be more equipped. Oh, I already see people following us. Great, great, great. Cool, cool. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you all so much for, for your advice to attendees. And um, for those tuning in, I'm sorry we couldn't get to everybody's questions today. You all had fantastic questions. Um, we tried to address as many as we could, but please, please, please feel free to email any of us with the questions you couldn't have answered today or with further questions that you think of later on. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of our panelists for participating. Um, certainly appreciate it. And we look forward to, to welcoming you all, um, hopefully to, to the JDP. And please let us know if you have any questions about, about applying. And then you have Hannah just dropped the, the Instagram right there in the chat. So take a look and, and follow that Instagram page. But everybody have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you, bye.